Hello, and just this last weekend, April 24th, I was in New Jersey for uh, BCF's swap meet. It was, uh, it was kind of a crazy experience. I got there super early in the morning. Well, I got, not, not super early, like 8 a.m. when they, uh, when they opened. And then there was just so much stuff there. I was just like overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that was for sale. And I, uh, well, I probably spent way too much money on things. There's just tons of stuff there and just tons of stuff I bought. And so, uh, this video, I just like to go through, um, all the stuff that I bought and just tell you about all the stuff I got, tell you about the event and just, uh, hopefully give you a preview of, uh, future videos to come on this channel. So, uh, let's get started. So first off, we have the first things I, uh, I picked up. These are being sold by BCF themselves. They had a booth there and they were selling a bunch of surplus stuff from their warehouse. And uh, besides that, then there were just people there selling their own things. So this was, like I said, just surplus from the VCF warehouse. And these are K-Pro 2s. I don't know too, too much about these machines, but they are portable computers back from uh, 1982, I believe. And, uh, just pick one up. They're pretty heavy. Let me just put one on the ground so I can show you what the um, what they look like. So on the front, you unclip it, and then your keyboard pops out. You got two floppy disk drives and a five-inch screen, I think. And a keyboard. Not clicky, but not that bad to type on. I don't know if any of these work. They were both, uh, according to VCF, barn finds, I, uh, I think. And the reason I have two of them is because one of them has a broken connector on the back of the keyboard. And the other one doesn't, but the other one was also covered in like tons of dirt, which I did manage to clean off um, after buying it and going back to the hotel. I... Uh, Spent like an hour or so just cleaning it off best I could before I, you know, actually brought it home. So I think this one, okay, no, this one has a good keyboard connector, but the other one that I put on the ground, this connector is, is broken. So what I'm hoping I can do is just combine these two of these into hopefully one working unit. And I guess if at all possible, try to repair the other one and get two working units. But, you know, my goal is at least one working one of these machines so if I happen to get two working great if I happen to get one working that's all I'm hoping for so next up we got some Apple stuff down here is a laptop this is a PowerBook 170 I can't even have a mouse got a little it's got a little trackball here I don't know if this guy um if this guy works this guy was for sale from someone who used to work at Cisco. He said that this machine was given out to him for work and must have had it for work. And who knows how long he used it for work for until they upgraded it. And therefore, who knows how long this machine has been sitting unused until I bought it. So don't know if it works. I'm going to assume that it does, but I don't have the power cable for it, though. Looking on the back. Power connector seems to be a normal barrel jack, so assuming I can find the voltage, I probably have a universal power supply that can power this thing up. And uh, like I said, he, since he worked at a uh, Cisco, he also had some Cisco stuff like this Cisco mug here, which he included along with the laptop. Now the big guy behind it was purchased from a different person. And the person selling this claims that this does work. So, if I flip this around, this is a little heavy, but uh, this here is not a Mac Pro. This is actually a Power Mac G5. Let's go ahead and uh, pop this off, and you can see that. 
to the G5. Inside are actually two hard drives, I think a one and a two terabyte hard drive. They were obviously upgraded. The RAM on this thing has been maxed out and I don't remember all the specs of this, the CPU or the video card and stuff, but this machine does work and I think he said that it has a fresh OS on it, you know, completely wiped and nothing on it. So this should be fun to, uh, to use. I got a Mac G3 and a G4. So now it's nice to have a G5 along, along with those. Plus I just love these metal cases. They just look great. And, uh, I've always wanted one of these. So I'm glad to have one now. Uh, up next we have a Commodore disk drive. This should go nicely with the Commodore VIC-20 I picked up on Craigslist back in January, I think, that I haven't actually tested to see if it works yet. Uh, this drive, however, does work. This is actually the newer, smaller 1541-2 drive. It's a lot lighter and smaller than the other one because um, one of the reasons because is it has an external power brick and so the other one having the power supply built in. I did get the power cable for this. It's just in another box right now. And this is the Panasonic Electronic Typewriter. This is actually given to me for free. And the reason I have it, or the reason the other person got it was because this is one that you think you can mod into being a uh, teletype. It's got a little serial port on the side. So with some modifications, you can actually use this as a serial terminal that would, you know, type onto the paper as you typed and as the computer outputted data. So I think he gave it to me for free just because that project never panned out for him and he just wanted to get rid of it. So I took it. I'm going to look at the instructions of that mod and I will try to do it on this thing. It'd be super cool to get this turned into a teletype. Hopefully I still find the ribbon for it. Pretty sure you can, so that should be fun. Next in the list is this other thing, which I also got for free. This is, well, it's just an empty case, but it's an empty AT computer case. And one that I guess kind of looks like, you know, a PC cloned case like PC AT or XT. On the front here, it's got reset and turbo buttons. And as you can see, there's no power button. That's because if I turn around to the side here, you can see a little cutout there. That's for like a power supply, like the XT power supply, where there's a big red switch on the side. So I'm going to need to find one of those power supplies in order to use this case. Well, you can see that besides being a little bit dirty on the inside, maybe it looks pretty good. And well, there's nothing in here. So you have a motherboard that I am planning on putting in here, maybe, or maybe a different motherboard. I don't know. I have two different projects that need AT cases. So I'm this one and I have another one. So you can decide which AT motherboard is going in this case and which one's going in the other AT keys I have. Okay. Now this box is just a bunch of other stuff that I bought from various different people there. I just crammed it all into this box, to make it easier to transport home. So first up we have this SCSI controller, which actually is with the connector. There is actually what's called EISA. Look at the connector. You can see it looks like sort of a normal ISA connector, but then there's like pins on, on top of it for EISA. This is out of a compact system and you can see it says right there, compact fast SCSI 2 controller. Next up, we have a number of, well, we have two of these PCM CIA Ethernet cards here with the dongles. They are, okay, there, the dongles that go with them. This is a DRAM module for, I think I have an IBM laptop. I can use modules like these. I'm not 100% sure what these go for, but I think I can use this in something. We have a SCSI connector for the power book I showed you before. Actually, two SCSI connectors, one with this type of cable on the end and one with this one. 
We have a PC speaker, which went with that case I just showed you. This is a Win TV, a PCI TV tuner. Not super useful as we um, can't get TV really over cable anymore. Maybe I kicked an antenna to it and tune in some channels, but mostly I bought this for the composite in. So maybe I can use it to record like an Atari or something that doesn't have any other type of output. Actually, I think the Atari I can convert to composite or I can use the RF directly for it. So this might be useful to record that, whereas other copied cards maybe can't record that very well. Have just a bag here so when i grabbed that one eisa card the guy just had a collection of other ones and just handed me pretty much all of the eisa cards that he had this is this is another scuzzy controller out of a compact this one says wide scuzzy whereas that one says fast scuzzy this one's been interesting this one actually has a floppy connector on it as well as the SCSI ports. I don't think this one's actually compact branded. This one is branded Micronet Tech. And then we have another wide SCSI card, which seems to be the same as the other one. We have an ISA SCSI card, just not EISA, just normal ISA. We have an ISA sound card here, a crystal one. I have a 3Com ISA network card, useful because it has that that socket on there, the boot ROM socket, which I can use for XT IDE BIOS or other boot ROMs like IPEXI. And then, as you can see on this label here, SCSI port, another ISA SCSI card. So these, elsewhere in another box, there is a whole collection of different IBM chips. I'm not entirely sure what all of them are, like we have these chips here, maybe there's some like RAM or cache chips. We have this Intel chip here. Hopefully you can read the text on that. I need to look up what this chip actually is. We have these chips, maybe also some type of cache or something. I have another box to show you it has more of these type of chips in it. Just some random memory sticks. So the memory sticks and these chips were in uh, a lot of stuff that I got. I'll explain that when I go through the other box of stuff. And then picked up some, some hard drives here, some Western Digital Caviar hard drives. Actually there's one more. There we go. Three Western Digital caviars of various different sizes, which I think they still work. Seller claimed they do, so this can be interesting in old projects where, because they can use a compact flash card, but because they use a hard drive, which are small enough that for like super old systems like 286s and stuff, these should work fine. And speaking of hard drives, there in this box there is also, this was in another pile that was free and this is a Barracuda hard drive. It's got looks like a standard connector on it just but this thing is pretty big like it's super thick. I'm not actually sure what type of system this came out of or if it even works. I just grabbed it because it looked cool. And lastly is this giant box of stuff. So all this stuff was collected throughout the day and on the way home, I stopped at Staples just to buy this box to help me bring it all home in. So, let's open it up. There's just so much stuff in here because there was just so much stuff going on 
at the swap meet that just was overwhelmed and grabbed so many things. This is a clock. Nothing too crazy about it, but this clock was thrown in along with something else that I had purchased and I got a good deal on all the things combined and well, I'll leave my hotel room didn't have a clock in it. I mean, I used my phone as an alarm, but I bought this clock so I can have a clock in my room. So just a clock, nothing too fancy about it. Um, that computer case that I showed has some accessories which in this bag here, just some like rails to install the drives and some little brackets to install three and a quarter inch drives and in the, I mean three and a half inch drives in the five and a quarter inch bay and just things like that. And I also bought from that person these adapters here. And these are actually more than just the three and a half to five and a quarter adapters. These are actually meant, meant for floppy drives. So there's a whole kit in the box. We have with the faceplate, a Molex to the floppy connector adapter. And we even have one of these, a card edge to not card edge adapter. So what you can do with this is you use a one and a quarter, I mean 1.44 meg floppy drive, three and a half inch and you adapt it to fit in a five and a quarter inch bay. So you can even use the cable, the five and a quarter inch cable instead of the other type of cable. Even has its own set of, of drive rails inside. So we have two of these just to have a spare. This is a pretty interesting kit of stuff. So we just kind of need to have all of these different parts and adapters and, and whatnot. Plus well, these seem to be seem to be new in their box, so that's kind of neat too. Oh, and this bag is just a normal PC power cable. It was with the K Pro, so it's like caked in dirt and stuff. So that's why it's in this bag. It's it's just kind of dirty. I also picked up this floppy disk holder. This was free. VCF was just giving away free stuff at the end of the day. So this was one of them. Inside are just some disks that weren't free, but I just needed a place to carry them. This is just two random disks that we're in a kit of stuff that I bought and I'm not sure what they're really for. I mean, obviously the boot disk is for something, but Mac store, I guess some hard drive disk. Oregon Trail 2. And in here are actually some These are some sealed CDs here. Some pretty, pretty, pretty nice chiptunes music. You should, um, you should check these out. There's a whole, they were there playing music, selling CDs. You should check these out if you like chiptunes music. This floppy disk was also included with those two floppy disks I showed you before, along with this. I don't know, some random CD. And this is a Power Mac G4 hardware test disc, which I think I picked up along with the PowerBook laptop. Okay, so so this box, I showed you some of those cash chips or whatever before, and those random floppy disks were in a box along with this. This is just an IBM like any static box. And there's a few of these. There was a whole box of these IBM boxes along with those chips and those random floppy disks that was all sold as a bundle, so I bought it. And in here we have 
This says a customer service plan for whatever product is in this box. This is apparently called a surprise. Surprise is an inexpensive accelerator for the IBM PC. This card increases the speed at which your computer runs from 30 to 250 percent. Surprise is designed to replace the 8088 chip on the system board of the computer. So inside we have this like socket adapter. Looks like this adapter would plug into the socket of the IBM PC and then has a little card edge reader on it. And then you would you go ahead and you throw this card in there so you'd have like this and on here is an NEC maybe 20 which I think was a common upgrade at the time and a bunch of other chips, I guess maybe cache or something for the CPU or RAM or something. So yeah, it doesn't need no slot because this just basically slots into where the original CPU went. Also included is a floppy disk. Not sure what's on it. Maybe there's some software you need in order to configure the CPU properly, or maybe there's some software you need to clock down the CPU in case you're running software that is speed dependent and doesn't like the fact that the V20 may be a faster chip. Another IBM box. Inside we have some CPUs, a 46DX33, Another 46DX33 and a 286 10MHz. Yet another IBM box. With some adapters inside. Took like another one of those floppy drive adapters I uh, showed from the floppy converter three and a half to five and a quarter converter we have another one of those and we have some other type of adapter here it looks like it plugs into a floppy cable and then has a pass through on it but also has a molex plug on it so I'm not totally sure what this one's for And then two more boxes that were in that lot of IBM boxes. More tiny little chips. Also branded IBM on this box. Inside here we have a an 8086-2 another one. Um what's next? Next is this, which is actually brand new, never used. It is a LS120 Super Disk drive with a PC card or card bus or PCM CIA plug on it and inside the drive is an LS120 disc but I can't get it out unless I power the drive but this is super cool to have I have an HP HP 95 LX little teeny computer don't know if it works this was like super cheap. Uh, I hope it works. I will try it out later. Kind of fun to type on. It's got a, yep, this side, a PCM CIA slot. So that Superdisk drive could connect to it. Assuming DOS on this thing could read it. 
Or I guess I can throw like a compact flash adapter in there to have a hard drive because I don't know how much storage this thing has. A user manual for paint, still sealed, just paint. This was free. Mm -hmm. um, along with those K-Pro systems, I got a big set of manuals for different K-Pro software and the machine itself. There's a few more. This should be super useful to help me use that machine. There are actually multiple sets of these like duplicates, but I um, only grabbed one set of manuals. Um, I actually had three K-Pro 2 systems. I bought two, somebody bought the third, so whoever got the other system got all the other manuals. There actually weren't three sets of manuals, there were two sets of manuals, so I feel okay taking one set of manuals with my two systems and then the other person got the other set of manuals with their one system. We have a copy of Still Sealed, Need for Speed 2, and a cool collection of games here, including Falcon AT, Flight of the Intruder, Stunt Driver, and Vet. We have what I hoped was Microsoft Plus, but there's actually no disc in here, so the guy gave this to me for free because what's in here is... Just the manual, but no disc. We have a big box copy here of OS2 Warp 3 and the bonus pack. This does in fact have the discs in it. I don't, I don't know what machine I'm going to install this on. Maybe one of the PS2 systems, you know, IBM OS on an IBM system. Be fun, right? And then all the discs of bonus pack. Another copy here of OS2 Warp. This one is called OS2 Warp Connect. Still version 3 though. This one says CD-ROM, where the other one was on floppy disks and this one also has a bonus pack too. It's also got some floppy disks here. It says diskette for CD-ROM so I guess maybe this is a boot disk and then the rest of the system installed off of CD-ROM. Looks like we also got a copy of Lotus Notes here so I probably won't use that. Yep, here's a disk. The totally cool way to run your network and your computer. A still sealed copy of Microsoft Virtual PC. Probably won't open this, but it's still sealed, so that's super cool. HP New Wave for Windows. Just another, you know, office suite, but HP branded and Still sealed. This looks super fun. Amy Diag. Amy Diag. Looks to be just a diagnostic suite for, I guess, made by American Megatrends. Maybe it'll work on non American Megatrends systems. Looks like it's supposed to have come with both three and a half and five and a quarter inch discs, but only has the one. That's fine. Advanced Diagnostic for T3 and 46 systems. Should be fun to test this out on all the systems we have. Oh, another K-Pro manual. User's guide for the Power Mac, or rather PowerBook, but unfortunately not for the model we have. We have the 170, and this is for the 
160 and 180. So I wonder what's different or if this is, you know, is relevant or not. Oh, okay. Here's the specs of that Power Mac and you can also see how much I spent on it. This is the Wi-Fi antenna for the Power Mac. I don't know if it has a Wi-Fi card, but it's the Wi-Fi antenna for the G5. This is a modem for Apple computers. This is the power brick for the Commodore disk drive I showed before. I think this is the power brick for that modem I showed you just a second ago. Oh. This little filter thing was on one of the K-Pros taped in front of the screen. This is just a random bag of ribbon cables, IDE cables, Molex cables. I forget exactly where this came from, but probably some useful things in here that I can use. Oh, and yeah, this was also in that IBM box I showed you before. This is just a whole bunch of more IBM chips. I think they all seem to be the same. They're individually packaged here, and there's a whole bunch of them, so I'm not sure what all these chips do, but again, I got a whole lot of, I of chips in IBM boxes, so of course I picked it up. And last, but certainly not least, is this E ISA motherboard. So, funny story about this. I, um, I bought this after I saw the guy selling EISA cards. I saw the guy selling EISA cards and from him I bought some some other things, not EISA cards, and then I was like, you know, why do I need EISA cards? I can't use them in anything, but you know, it's cool to see. And then I find this motherboard, which by the way, this is a 46 under here. I think a 66 megahertz. I don't feel like taking the heat sink off, but so I find this motherboard and then I run back to that guy and I'm like, hey look, 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 I found an EISA motherboard and then he just glad me sold sold me all of the EISA cards he had so that should be fun to test out in here so it seems like I can't fit an EISA card into a normal ISA slot but you can fit a normal ISA card into an EISA slot this will have a video of its own of course yes that case I got I guess I was thinking of putting this motherboard in there so I might do that or I might put this motherboard into another case that I have not sure Anyway, that seems to be all the stuff that I got. Thanks for watching, and uh, most of the stuff, not all the stuff, will get videos in the future.